So using Factory Talk Machine Edition and making a runtime and then downloading to the runtime, what are some best practices and what are the things to do to understand? I'm gonna show you real quick because I have to make an actual runtime and I have to go through that process. So let's go ahead and do this. So um, being, let's just say you, you edit your, your runtime, you edit a screen or you come in here and you added some alarms um, into your alarm structure and you wanted to actually come in and, and you update it. In this case, my in my case right here, I added the alarms, um, what uh, ele in the word eleven through uh, zero through actually one through uh, yeah one through uh, thirty two, which is the thirty two bit alarms, um, and then pointed them to the strings that I wanted. So I wanted to act actually give that that extra little growth for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and make the runtime afterwards and download to my actual panel view. Now I have a panel view plus performance. This is using uh, Factory Talk View 13. Although this this what I'm explaining to you works with all Factory Talk versions. So just keep in mind as long as you're not working with something like Factory Talk 4 or something like that, um, just keep in mind uh, this still works. So what we're going to do is we're going to create runtime. Me personally, I don't like to rename everything. Um, this is uh, I am running Factory Talk uh, View. 13, but the application, the panel view plus performance that I have is a, a runtime version of 12. So I have to change my actual runtime version to match the actual firmware that's on the panel view plus. There is at, the, not the, at this current time, there is no panel view plus performance 13. So I'm stuck with 12, which is perfectly fine because that's just what, what the runtime is going to be. And then I will always allow the development application to be converted. So you can you can deny that or you can put a password behind it if you wanted to be secure about it. In this case, we're just going to re replace it. So I'm gonna save and it's gonna say replace the current file that I have on. Yes, I do want to replace it. Now all this is replacing is the file that's on my laptop or on the actual computer that I'm working on. It's not downloading anything to the actual, uh, uh, the panel view as of yet. What we're doing is we're making the runtime file. This will indicate if everything is healthy. It will indicate also to any errors that you do have. So if there are errors, you need to fix them at that point in time. Um, again, when it comes down to it, this is making the runtime file that is accessible to run on the panel view. The panel view plus you have, the panel view you have, or the panel view performance that you have. Uh, I have a panel view uh, performance 15. So this is what I'm currently actually using. Uh, so you will see that too. So as it's as it's finishing up making the actual runtime. So what you or at this point we've made the runtime. So now we go to tools and then transfer utility. Now in transfer utility, this is going to be where everybody kind of gets a little bit different. All right. So you want to make sure you're on the download section. You want to make sure you're pointed to the the file that you just made. As you you can tell, twelve thirty, uh, two thousand twenty three. At 123, that's when I just made that. That's currently where I'm at right now. So I want to make sure that I'm downloading that file. I'm giving it a name. You don't have to give it a name, but I am. It, it, the storage is internal, and I'm replacing the communications. The reason I'm replacing the communications is because I have my communications set up, meaning I have my my PLC. I'm attached to my actual uh, PLC file. And I'm able to, <clears throat> I'm able to actually pull in the the tag structure. I'm able to pull in all the information that I need, so that I'm able to, you know, replace the communications. So that's saying that the shortcuts are healthy. All the things that I've set up prior are healthy. Um, if you're unsure about that, don't do not replace communications. But if you if it is a brand new, uh, if it is a brand new P uh, panel view plus or panel view or a panel view performance then you do have to replace the communications because it's going to replace the communications that you built in the design of the HMI. It's going to replace them with, and that's going to be the conductivity path that the actual HMI, the operator interface uses to go to back and talk back to your PLC. Hopefully that made made sense on that. So that's generally, sometimes I check this box, sometimes I uncheck this check this box if I didn't make any communication changes. So in this case, I am. Um, I browse 
you can see my Panaview Plus right here. It's a Panaview uh, Plus 7 Performance. It's a 1500. I'm going to download to it now. This is going to download to it. It's going to say, hey, do you want to overwrite? Yes, I do because I did not change the name of the runtime file. But I'm perfectly fine with that because I have backups of everything that I do. I cannot stress enough to have that you make backups of everything that you do. <clears throat> At this point in time, it has downloaded successfully and the panel view is rebooting. So it's going to reboot and it's going to run the application because I have, I have the, the box checked run application at startup. It's going to run the application that I just downloaded to it at startup. So real quick there, you know, as far as like going up here and doing a test and you can, you can do a test, um, when it comes down to it, this is just showing you how to create a runtime and how to download a runtime to the actual system. And if you want you were curious about to see how the system worked, uh, or how the system looked, you could see by just by merely going and doing a test. The test is made for diagnostics, made for you to develop something, make sure you have good conductivity to your PLC, make sure that all your tags are working, nothing's wireframed, and that you do have good functionality of your system. So that's what I like to use the test for. In this case, I'm just showing you that you can test it um, as my panel view is booting up. Um, I'm not showing my panel view just because the simple fact of it's gonna be the same thing that I'm showing you here. Um, it pop populates right here. You can easily see everything is working. You can see I do have uh, all of my things working. You can tell right here, alarms, alarm history. I don't have any alarm history. Keep in mind on, on machine edition, your alarm history is based upon the last time the power got cycled or the last time you downloaded to it. So it's only retentative um, based upon that you know that information right so it clear, kind of clears itself so just keep in mind of that and to shut this test mode down it's control x that shuts that down now the panel view is actually up by now uh but again making the runtime using the transfer utility um side note too you can use a transfer utility to upload as well let's just say we want to upload we can upload and we want to first look right here is it going to be internal storage or where did you put the file you're going to point to your source you don't have a source yet because we need to come down here and point to the actual select source of terminal that's going to be the terminal i just downloaded to we're going to select the source you can tell that i have my mer right there i can upload it i can choose my destination i can put it on my desktop and upload it just like that and that's going to be where I can upload it and reconstitute it as an application if I absolute need to. That's why it was highly important that you check that box when you make your runtime that you can actually do that. You can do a compare too. Um, but again, when you're creating that runtime, just keep in mind, you always check this box, always allow conversion. That's a, a helpful tool that I've used and hopefully it helps you as well. Hopefully that cleared up some questions and answers as far as making sure that you do, you know, download and everything is is working properly as far as replacing communications. When I refer to the uh, tag structure, um, it's not like you can go to a tag database in here. So what you can do, you can do that through here, and just merely just come over here and do that. But uh, what I like to do is just click on one of my screens. Uh, let's just click on one of these blower screens, and we'll go to tag substitution. And I'll just come over here and refresh. And as long as you refresh, you should have all your tags that you use, right? So you should have all the tags inside of your PLC that you use. You have your online files, you have your online stuff. You have all your, your files that you have or your, your tags that you have and all the other subsequent, subsequent files. Like if they're AOIs, they're gonna be structured obviously different. Like um, if it's an analog input or if it's an input right here, you can see I can only choose certain things, right? So I could choose right here, the data of this, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, just keep that as far as making sure your tag database is up to date. And how you do that is making sure you, you refresh that that uh, folder that you know, you're, you're, con you're already connected to your PLC. Make sure you already, you have good conductivity to your PLC. So 
your computer needs to have computer uh, connectivity to the PLC and to the obviously the developmental software that you are using. So just keep that in mind. That's just some of the best practices that I use, and I don't just want to share them because that should be helpful to uh, answering questions about ME or Machine Edition that people do have. So hopefully that answers the answers some questions I've, I've I've received in the past. So I just wanted to, to make this video and to clear that air. So hopefully that did help you, and we'll see you guys on the next one.